Hello there, this is Uncle from TacticalGamer.com. This is the second tutorial in the Arma 3 editor series. We're going to create a playable group. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about creating units, uh, groups, uh, real quick, and then some waypoints just to get moving around. Okay, so I'm going to move my, my player over here. I've changed the player into a team leader. Alright, and I've changed their rank to a corporal. I'm going to, I have my unit uh, tool selected. I'm going to double click it and create another unit. By default, it's it puts down whatever you had last selected. So I'm going to now create some riflemen for the squad, make it playable, and I'm going to make them privates. Okay, I'm going to then have another rifleman that's playable. It's a private. I'm going to have a couple of auto riflemen, make them playable. I can speed this process up by using the enter key on my keyboard just to get through these menus a little quicker. But as you can see here, I need one more player to make this six, and I'm going to have a combat lifesaver, and there we go. As you can see, all units are reporting to the team leader. I can change that by having the combat lifesaver, let's say, let's make him a sergeant. I see that the relationships change, all the units report to whoever's the highest rank. So make that a private again, and there we go. Okay, one thing I can also do is let's say I was creating a, a unit over here on the map, another combat lifesaver, let's say, uh, even if it was a player or not, I could bring that unit back over to here, and you can see that it didn't automatically put them in the same group. The editor will do that when you put units of the same faction close to each other. It'll automatically group them. I can change that by pressing the group tool, selecting a unit, and dragging off of it to nothing. Now he's no longer part of that group. Or I can put him back in the group by doing the same thing. I could select this and make him part of that group, and he will automatically report to the highest ranking person in that group. I can hold my cursor over top of him, click go back to my unit selection tool that is and click on them, drag them, press my left shift key spin them around, hold my cursor over them and press delete. Okay, so that's a little bit about groups. Uh, the group tool will also lay down groups in, in the map. If I click it, double click it on the map, I can go blue four an infantry rifle squad. Boom, there we go. A ten man rifle squad. All I need to do is go in and make them playable to be able to play those units. However, I don't want them. And I'm going to delete them. All we're going to do now is some waypoints. Waypoints are controlled by the team leader who gives the orders to their everybody else in the unit. So I'm going to double click now after I've uh, used the two feet, which stands for waypoints on our editor. Uh, the default type of waypoint is a move waypoint. There's lots of different types. You can tell them to get into a vehicle that you place or uh, to hold at a certain location, um, uh, cycle. We're going to use move and cycle. Okay, so I'm going to make this a move waypoint. Uh, I'm going to tell them to open fire, engage at will. That their formation is going to be a column. They're going to go at full speed so that this demonstration goes quickly. And I'm going to make them. Uh, I'm going to tell them that they're safe. All right. So you can see that they will move specifically to that one point in the map. And as I zoom in, it gets very, very specific. That's exactly where the leader will go before he goes on to the next waypoint, which I could double click and create. If I select something else, any other unit in the map, and I want to continue on with that waypoint path, all I need to do is select the team leader again, the waypoint tool, and I can add waypoints onto there. And I can change the orders of them. Alright, so we're going to move down to here, then we're going to move off to the left, we're going to move off to the right, and then I would put a, another waypoint here, I'm going to put a cycle waypoint. And cycle waypoints are very interesting because all it does is it goes to the nearest waypoint and makes it repeat back and forth. So, just to make this a little clearer, 
if I was to make this path, what it would actually do is the team leader would come down to here, move to that waypoint, move to that waypoint, and then the cycle waypoint would just make it move back to here. And then it would cycle back and forth. If I move my waypoint back to here, it's going to go down to here, it's going to move to that waypoint, to that waypoint, back to here. And do that triangle over and over again. <coughs> Pardon me. If I move the cycle point back to the start point, it should come back to where the unit started and back and around. And it may just stay on the waypoints themselves here though. Okay, so for the purpose of this demonstration, I just want them to go back and forth so we can see that they move forward and then just straight back and forth across this runway. Turn textures on and we can see the runway there. Okay, here we go. Oh, there's one more other thing. Oh, about these waypoints. Uh, they have a placement radius and a completion radius. If my first waypoint was to move them into this building that's not enterable, this unit will move it to the building and because it never actually gets into the actual point of the waypoint it will never continue on the path so how we uh, control that is put a completion radius on it of let's say 10 meters you can see now it's indicated by a solid line around the waypoint so as soon as these units get within 10 meters of that waypoint it will be consumed completed and they will move on okay there's another neat thing about randomizing missions that you can do with this uh, by placing a completion radius of let's say a hundred meters or a placement radius and what it does is anywhere within this hundred meters of this dotted circle it will choose the move point anywhere within there at random so if it chose this point over here these units would move over to the left and then continue to the next waypoint in the path so in this way you can randomize patrols and that sort of thing for this purposes of this demonstration I really don't want to do that. I'm going to give it a placement radius of 20 meters. So they might move off to the left of the runway, might move off to the right of the runway, might move right down the middle of their runway and then they're going to move to the waypoint 2 and back and forth across the runway. Here we go. Preview will save the mission and then go into it in the game. I'm going to not choose the leader so that we can see how the um, the move markers work from the AI. Alright, they're going to go very, very slow because I made the moves safe. So I'm just going to quickly change that. Uh, aware. Now they will move faster. Because their behavior is aware, their feed speed will be full. One of the things you're going to see from Tactical Gamers shortly is a lot more emphasis on uh, training people for mission editing, and this is uh, one start of that. And there's going to be a lot of people doing all sorts of projects to do that. So they moved to waypoint one. It was a little just about in the middle of the uh, field. They moved off to the left after that random one, and now they're moving to the right. Now they will cycle back across the runway. That's as simple as that works. So that's the end of tutorial two. Uh, creating a simple group and some waypoints for tacticalgamer.com. This is Uncle. Catch you on the flip-flop.